All right, quick fun video today. We're gonna to be talking about the Random Data API. So if you are a developer and you're building websites and you don't have any data yet, but you want to build an interface that actually displays some information, well, this is your friend. This is one of the APIs that are available out there for giving you data that you can use during the development phase of your application, whether it's a web app, mobile app, whatever it is. So you get this data and this actually comes with a whole bunch of different endpoints. So we can get data for users, addresses, banks, appliances, beers, blood types, credit cards, all this stuff. And pretty simple to use. So here's the default endpoint for users. By default, it gives you just one user record, but you can request a different number. You can say, hey, I need 20 records or I need 10 users. So this is users. Here's one for beers. The default gives you just the one record. So I'm going to build a quick little web page here using this API just to show you how quick and easy this can be. All right. So my web page, as it is, there's a header, there's a main element. Inside the main element, this is where we're going to stick our data. I'm going to build a whole bunch of cards displaying data because that's eventually what my app is going to do. So I have some CSS in here, pretty basic stuff. Um, I've got some CSS for my card, some sizing, a little bit of background color, font color. Uh, I'm using position relative because I'm going to position stuff inside of that. But that's it. There's not a lot to this. If you're looking for a copy of this code, you'll find a link down in the description. Get all the finished code from this. All right. So to simplify everything, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to listen for a click anywhere on the page. If somebody clicks on the page, it's going to call my get data function. So the base URL, random API, random data API.com slash API V2 slash, and then the type. So just a few of the types here, beers, users, credit cards, addresses. So I'm going to do the beers. I've already got HTML designed for that. And then we'll do users quickly after that as well. So I'll show you two different renderings. Okay. I take the string for the API endpoint and I'm turning it into a URL object. This lets me work easier with that thing. I can actually uh, append on the query string without having to worry about adding the correct things in the string or splitting things apart. Just it's easier if you work with objects. So new URL, this is the URL. And then I'm going to create a URL search params because there's parameters that we can pass to the end of this thing. So again, instead of writing a question mark and then writing out the rest of the string, I like working with objects, makes things cleaner. So my params, that's my URL search params. This is my query string. We're going to set, and there's two values that we want to set. One is size, and the other one is going to be response type. Now the default response type is JSON, but just to be explicit here to show that I am setting it, I'm going to do this. I am setting it to JSON and for the size, let's start with, I don't know, we'll say 10. So I'm looking for 10 beers to come back as JSON. All right. I have my build beer function here that I'm going to call. It's going to build 10 of these. So there's going to be 10 divs with the class card. I'm going to take the ID, the alcohol percentage, the name and the style and embed that inside of each one of these cards. So let's do our fetch to get that data first of all. So fetch URL, that's the one we defined right here on line eight. I'm going to do dot then I get my response object back from the server. As long as that response object is okay, then I will be able to extract the data. If it's not okay, I'm going to throw an error. So you can handle the error however you like. You should display errors to the user whenever you get one. But in this case, I'm just going to write it out to my console. So I'm going to have two thens and a catch. This is where I'm going to catch the error. And I will just, when this error happens, it's going to be spit out, come down to the catch and be passed into console.warn. If I don't have an error, so if the response was okay coming back from the server, then we can return response 
JSON. Now we requested this as JSON, so I can call the JSON method. Then the JavaScript object created from the JSON string that is inside the file coming back from our wonderful random data API, that is going to be passed to our function right here. So build beer HTML. All right, so save that. Let's run it. When I click on the page, oh, we have an error here. And that error is that I did not attach my parameters to the URL. Yeah, so we need to do that before we actually pass it off. Right now, I'm just sending this. I'm not specifying a size or a response type. Now, I should get the, the default, but I'm only getting one object back. I'm not getting an array. If we look here at the beer's endpoint, if you're only requesting one, you are just getting an error, uh, an object. It's not an array of objects. That's what my error is here. It's saying, hey, you can't loop through an object. So that's my fault because I didn't attach these to the URL. So we're going to set that. We'll say url.search. So that's the query string. That's our params. There's the object. So we've set our query string parameters. We've attached it to the URL. Now when we do our fetch, there we go. We get our 10 beers coming back. And every one of those beers coming back is one of these objects. So we have alcohol and name and style. Those are the three things that we're displaying here. So you can see there's the name, there's the style, and there's the percentage. And it's like this for all the endpoints, whether you're talking about users or credit cards or blood types, beer, all of them, it's an array of objects. So we can just quickly and easily pass the JavaScript array that comes back to our function to build the data. Now inside of main, this uh, build beer function, my main inner HTML is going to be set to the result of this. So data is my array. I use the map method because I want to create an array of strings. Right now it's an array of JavaScript objects. I want to build an array of strings. These are my strings. It's the HTML for the cards. I'm using destructuring here. So this would be the object. So I could do something less like this. I could say beer. And then inside my code, beer.style, beer.name, beer.alcohol, beer.id. But to save myself having to write beer in front of each one of them, I do this. I do destructuring to extract those four properties from the beer object. And then that is what we use right here. All right, let's do the same thing for users. So instead of beers, we're going to change the type to users. I'll get 10. I'll keep it as JSON. This is going to run the same. I'm just going to call a different function. Instead of build beer HTML, it's going to be my build user HTML. Otherwise, my code stays the same. So this is another benefit of when you're building your code, if you want to keep your functions small, it means that they're reusable. Here, I changed one word, and here I changed the value of one variable. No other changes required, and this is all going to work again. Now inside of here, I'm going to have a function that is really, really close to what we had here. So I'm going to copy this. Now there's going to be different variables. What I want to get here, actually, I will just comment that out for now. We'll save it. We'll run this to look and see what we get in the users. Click 10, open it up. Here are the users. So what I'm going to extract from this is I'm going to take the first name. That'll be a good one. I'll take the email. So this will be my heading. This will be my paragraph. And then I'm going to take the avatar. So they're actually giving me a URL that I can use for an image. And I'm going to make my avatar into sort of a faded background on my card. So two text fields plus an image. All right. So inside of here, let's uncomment this. Looping through things that I want were first name. I'll also keep ID. Instead of style, I want email. And instead of alcohol, I want avatar. Now, the first thing 
that I'm going to build right here is going to be that image that I talked about. So we'll set that and the alt. This is an image coming from the RoboHash API, which I've actually recently done a video on. So if you're looking for more information about the RoboHash API and generating these images, the card at the top there will let you get that. So my avatar value, that is the URL for this image. The name is no, not name, but it's going to be first name now. And down here is going to be email. So those are the only changes that I made. First name, email, ID, avatar. The ID is still going to be there as a reference number. We've got the source for the avatar. And in my CSS, what I'm doing with these cards now, um, on the card, I've got overflow hidden. So if content spills out, it gets cut off. And the card is also set to position relative, which combined with the position absolute on the image means I can place the image right at the very top. I'm making sure the Z index set to zero or one, it's going to be at the back. The other content will sit on top of it. And the opacity is going to be set very, very, very low. And I make sure that this image fits inside my card. So 90% the width of the card, 16% opacity, Starting in the top left corner, I'm going to have images right here that look like they're sort of faded backgrounds behind this text. So let's take a look. There we go. So inside of here, if we look at the first object, first name, Jermaine, yeah. And Jermaine Champlin was the email, yes. And the avatar, this right here, this URL, that is this image that's in the background. And that's random data API. Um, doesn't really matter which endpoint you switch to, any one of these, it's just going to, you can take that endpoint, if I click on appliances, you can say this is what you're gonna get for appliances. It's an array of objects like this. You want blood types, same idea. You want credit cards, there you go. This is what you're gonna get. So a great API for generating some data that you can quickly use to mock up the interface for your application. And once again, the content is linked to down in the description if you're looking for that. If you have any comments, please, uh, or questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.